Holly. I'm an Obtainium Engineer and Jack of All Trades, and I'm here working on Electro Bird. Beautiful sunny morning after all this rain. Well, it's uh, day 14 of our two week target to uh, do the EV conversion on the 1968 Toyota Stout for Celidary. Uh, we're here at the Price Frost Research and Development Workshop. We've been making good progress, but uh, not finished yet. We've got a little bit of work to do to uh, stop the rust that we saw last night in the firewall. Uh, got to get some fluid in the in the gearbox and in the in the diff. I guess we'll we'll jump into the cab and we'll chop open some of that rust, scratch out what we can, uh, get fish oil into it. For those of you that uh, said it's unlikely that he's gonna make it in two weeks, I hear you. it has been has been a lot of work. We're close, so let's get into it. All right, so I think I'm gonna do something that some of you stout people might uh, never forgive me for, but... Uh... Look at that rust, man. Look out, now I've got the compressed air. Yep. There's the plane. It's only 10 cents, but it's pretty old. I mean, it's not 1968 old. Just chopping the rust out of the firewall and then scrubbing all the uh, rust in behind before I phosphoric and then fish oil it. Now I've said quite a few times this isn't a stout restoration uh, but for those of you that have ended up here uh, checking this out from a stout perspective just a little tip yeah as you probably know the rust in the firewall is the Achilles heel of these vehicles suspect the water's coming down that uh, that pillar and then working its way along. And this is the uh, commercial product that the bottle was empty, but gives you an idea. It's 20% weight for weight phosphoric acid. And the suggestion is to dilute it, two parts water, one part of this rust converter. Phosphoric acid that I've got is 85%, which makes me think maybe it should be diluted more. But if you're a chemist and you know what the answer is to the right solution, leave us a comment, love to know. I've got the gearbox and engine assembly back out just to drill these uh, motor mount holes here. I think we want to keep all the crap out of the motor, so just going to make a little uh, guard that goes along that can unbolt. Just a little bolt-in guard. grandfather's old folding jig here. folding on my grandpa's old folding jig. Really nice to use that. It's actually the first time I've used it. Thank you, Jack. Miss you, mate. That'll be along the bottom. The angle on the front, motor's in here. Keep a bit of the mud and crap off the motor. We don't want mud going in the brushes.
yeah, we've just got a little uh, angle piece on the front now, and I've made some gaps in there so that uh, when you're driving forward, generally speaking, mud and dirt don't get in, but there's a spot for any moisture that's in here to run out, and the same down the back. That thread's been well cut. Very nice, look at that. While I had the uh, adapter plate and coupling and motor off the gearbox, I just thought I'd quickly change this end oil seal, which I do have on hand now. It's nearing the end of uh, day 14. We aren't really that close to being out of roll yet. <laughs> so I guess uh, those people that raised their eyebrows at me, I hear ya. <laughs> we will see uh, how long it takes to get this 1968 Toyota Stout out and driving and complete and back up to Solidary. We will see. We'll see how wrong I was. I, I estimated 14 days. I aimed for 14 days. I didn't really know. I, I've never done this before. I've never electrified a vehicle. There have been some days in there where we weren't able to work on the project. So it depends how you define it, 14 days. But I'm saying 14 days in total because I want to get my ute back. <laughs> My ute is at Celadary at the moment doing the daily uh, milking run. Yeah, pretty keen to finish the project, but the project's a lot of fun. So not, not trying to finish it from get it out of the way, but although I have to say the aim for two weeks wasn't anything to begin with of a problem. Although I have noticed myself started starting to try to fit more in than maybe is realistic. Sorry if I've led you guys along in the last few days. There's often lots of these little in and out things, uh, like the gearbox and motor have come in and out quite a few times. Didn't quite make uh, 14 days. In fact, we don't know we don't know how long it's going to take. But uh, right now, let's get some oil in this and get it back in before the day's over. Oh, here we are back under the stout. This feels like a bad dream. Yeah, we're just uh, gonna put some fluids in this uh, diff, finally. It's uh, day 16 of the EV conversion of the 1968 Toyota Stout for Cellar Dairy. We're sort of uh, finishing up on a lot of the mechanical work now and getting into the proper uh, electrical uh, part of the the conversion. Probably if you were starting with a vehicle that was roadworthy and all mechanically uh, you are happy with, then this is more where uh, you'd be jumping in. Today I'm really starting to put my head into the zone of the electrical components that are needed uh, and where they're going to be placed in the vehicle. So I've, I've, I've already got the electrical components that are needed. The the motor controller and contactors and safety switches and fuses and all sorts of things like that. Yeah, so I've already got a bit of an idea of how that's all going to work to have ordered those components, but uh, I've been doing a little bit of uh, thinking about how I'm going to hook them up. And yeah, we'll be having a look at how they might fit under the dash because we pulled out uh, all the dash in the cab. So where the rust was, we cut in there with the angle grinder and got better access, got all the all the loose rust out and we put uh, phosphoric acid on there and then after that um, put fish oil uh, over us. So now the cab stinks and Tess <laughs> noticed it straight away. She's like, is it going to smell like that forever? <laughs> if you know what fish oil smells like and you, yeah, anyway, you might sympathize with Tess. We'll be ripping into that uh, electrical layout. Uh, today and plugging some of those electrical components together. Also, we've got uh, 
a guy from uh, the local EV conversion group, uh, Gus, coming by today. So looking forward to have him uh, contribute his skills. We've got a, he's a professional firmware engineer and uh, really, really appreciate his uh, um, knowledge on the, on the project and it'll just be good fun to have him over. So can't wait for him to turn up. It's time to get stuck into it. Here's the finished adapter plate after spraying and I think it's pretty much good to go in now so we'll uh, hopefully put that in for the last time. So this is the first time I've mounted the motor adapter plate and coupling to the gearbox uh, in the vehicle as opposed to lowering them in as one so you can see there the gearbox on the left in the middle of the adapter plate and then you can see inside there the coupling it's about time to start seeing whether we can get some electrical connections attached to that motor i'm not exactly sure where they'll go yet we're just checking basic length we'll have a look inside the cab yeah so i reckon that's a pretty good spot for the box so we might start drilling some holes and get it bolted on We've actually got four bolt holes here that are already got uh, threads cut in them. So we're just gonna use them to uh, bolt that little uh, box from the other side. I'm just gonna pop a hole through the firewall and come out in the box. This is, uh, this is Gus. We're just, uh, Sitting there having a look over the uh, stout manual, uh, the 72 stout manual, and uh, seeing whether we can figure out a way to wire up the motor controller in a way that's relatively intuitive for getting in and using the, the old key. While Gus is having a look at that, I should mention that uh, he's uh, part of local EV group, has uh, one of his own uh, electrification uh, project, a, what is it, a Hyundai Kona? Kona, yeah. Um, Kona Electric, it's been crashed. Yeah, so that's going to be the donor vehicle for a, is it a uh, Ute electrification you're going to do? Yeah, that's the plan. I don't cool. have a Ute yet, but that's the plan. Gus is going to need to use his uh, his firmware engineering skills uh, because there's not a lot of work has been done on uh, on the on the Konas to know uh, what all the control, uh, what would you say, control signals are to control the inverters and... The, the yeah, that's right. Nobody's figured out exactly what... Uh, how to drive it or what the mm -hmm. messages between all the components are. Unlike say a Nissan models. Leaf where people have spent the time to diagnose the protocols and document them and now they're like being used a lot whereas there's a heap of vehicles around that are just like no one's done the work. That's right I think yeah a few months but um, hopefully we can get some cam logs and mm. figure out how to drive it and stuff yeah. Yeah anyway we'll get back to trying to figure out um, how we want to lay out the uh, motor control uh, unit and its various inputs to turn it on and off. So I'm going to put our heads back into the manual. Um, and yeah, Gus and I have been sketching away a bit in the greenhouse and we've been having a look here at where we're going to mount everything. Um, so we've got a couple of holes uh, to go through for the main uh, motor, motor cables. And on the other side of the firewall there, we've got uh, a box that we're going to put the motor controller in and main contactor and safety switch and a few other things. We'll put up on the screen for you a little, um, the design that we've uh, come up with. And we've got a, a pretty pretty neat little way, I think, uh, to use the, still the traditional driving experience of getting in and uh, turning the key on um, uh, in, a, in a way that safely uses and separates the 48 volt from the the 12 volt, uh, that's a Victron DC to DC converter. So that will run all the 12 volt uh, side of the, the vehicle. And it's got a little remote on off uh, switch. So we'll just run that uh, through the key and the key will be completely separate uh, from all the traditional functions that it would be doing. We worked out where we're gonna mount anything yet. Yeah, I think we, we were gonna uh, probably put the DC to DC converter centrally there close to these holes uh, for getting power to it and also the leads here where the power uh, did come from originally which was down off the alternator 
uh, pretty easy to bring across uh, to there. Uh, and the battery cables, I'm pretty sure we're going to bring along the floor on the inside for the most direct route because the batteries are going to be on the back of the vehicle on the slip-on. So, yeah, I feel like I've got my head around. Uh, really appreciate going through the wiring of the vehicle with you, Gus, and the uh, getting your input on how to design it. Obviously, this is not a road-going vehicle, and there's lots of things that could be done, that like safety standards and things for road-going vehicles uh, that are next level up. And we are trying to do a good job, but there is a difference between this and what you would need to do to put a vehicle on the road. So, uh, keeping that in mind that um, if you're doing a conversion for the road, uh, don't just copy what we've done. Make sure you do your homework and add uh, anything that is needed to be up to standards in your area. I think I've got my head around what Ned's doing now. Great. Gus has just headed off. It's great to have his input in the design of the uh, how we were going to hook up some of the electronics, particularly how we were going to use the vehicle's existing 12 volt uh, wiring and switches and all that gear, how we're going to interact that with the high voltage side. I know 48 volts not high, but just to differentiate the two. Um, also useful if you're doing a road going vehicle, you'll need them separate. So we did realize that motor control isn't isolated. It's not going to be a problem uh, for this vehicle, but that means that there's just one less level of safety uh, in that if a positive terminal of the 48 volt battery becomes disconnected and touches any part of the vehicle, then there will be sparks and fire up until the fuse blowing. But that's a pretty big fuse to be able to run a big motor. So in a road going vehicle, that would have to be uh, both the positive and the negative would need to be separate from the chassis. Happy to go ahead with this as a non-isolated build. What I am doing at the moment is I'm starting to put the gear into the inverter that we repurposed. The old household inverter that we salvaged to use the box for to house the motor controller and other electronics. So I've just drilled a hole in the lid and starting to wire up that box. So yeah, thanks for coming by Gus. Really good to have your uh, head on the job. The outcome will be better because you're involved. So much appreciated, mate. Really exciting to be actually putting this electronics in because I feel like I've strung you all along for an awful long time saying this was going to happen just around the corner. Um, that's probably an indication more of my own delusion than anything else, but uh, it's good to be finally doing it. making up some short link cables for this uh, the lid which has got our main isolator switch and we're just making up a cable to go from here down to the contactor in electrical land finally.